So someone wanted to know about how we're using the flow of fluid dynamics and physical properties in terms of neuropomology. And so the one that we need to know is on the venous side, and this is how um, we're gonna apply these physical properties of fluids in our venous outflow system. So this is, happens to be a diagram of the superior sagittal sinus, the torcula, the transverse sinus, the sigmoid sinus, and down the jug. So if we're looking at venous sinuses, then some of the things that we see are dependent on flow. And one of those principles is called Bernoulli. So in the Bernoulli principle, if you have P1 and P2, but you narrow the radius, if you decrease the radius of this, and that thing is called venous sinus stenosis. When you have venous sinus stenosis, if you decrease the R, the radius here, the velocity will increase, and patients will hear that as a symptom, which is called pulse synchronous tinnitus. Pulse synchronous tinnitus. They're hearing the increased velocity. So even though it's called tinnitus in the literature, it's a real brewery. They are hearing a real sound. It's no nothing to do with their ear. It's a real sound, and that is dictated mm -hmm. by a principle, the Bernoulli principle, where the decrease in the radius increases the velocity. In addition, that condition right there where the venous sinus narrows the stenosis is sometimes hypothesized to be the cause of idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So when you have narrowing of this sinus, venous sinus stenosis, that is a starling resistor, starling. So when we have a, a closed system, if you have external compression on a compressible system, like in this case, the venous sinus, ICP narrows that sinus, causes the Bernoulli, they hear it as pulse synchronous tinnitus, However, that change in the flow is, means this thing's a starling resistor. And what that means is, if you lower ICP, this thing might open. If you raise the ICP, close again. In order to get rid of this starling resistor, you can throw a rigid construct across that stenotic segment. And that thing is called a venous sinus stent. So some people believe, and there's some empiric evidence to support this, that if it is a starling resistor, and that increased ICP causes the narrowing, then maybe it doesn't matter if it's the cause or the effect of increased ICP, eliminating the starling resistor and the compressible system here with lower ICP, if you can put a rigid stent across that, and that is the treatment of IIH. So that condition is starling. So now you have two things, starling and Bernoulli. However, Bernoulli does not take into account viscosity viscosity. So in the venous sinus system, we have venous sinus stenosis, but we also have venous sinus thrombosis. And in thrombosis, what you're looking at as an additional risk factor is viscosity. And that is called Poisset. Poisset. So the Poisset means that we have not only the pressure and the radius and the velocity, but you're also accounting for viscosity. And that is dictated by Virchow's triad, which is endothelial damage, venous stasis, and a hypercoagulable state. And so when we see venous sinus thrombosis as opposed to venous sinus stenosis, we have to account for viscosity under Poisset, and that means it can look just like IIH to you. So every patient with what you think is idiopathic intracranial hypertension needs to have an MR venogram, both to look for venous sinus stenosis, but also for venous sinus thrombosis. In patients who have the Bernoulli pulse synchronous tinnitus, you gotta account for the viscosity and a full hypercoagulable state workup is gonna be done for this venous sinus thrombosis patient. And that's an emergency that has to come into the hospital. And then that means you have to work, work it up and look for Virchow. So the fluid dynamic principles you need to know for IIH, for NeurOP on the venous side are the Bernoulli principle, pulse synchronous tinnitus, the Poisset, which includes the viscosity, the Virchow triad, which accounts for hypercoagulable states and hyper of viscosity syndromes, the starling resistor, and the rigid stent that might treat IIH.